Marhaba, it's me Jem wa ana atlang al arabi. That was really hard for me to say. Thank you so much for everyone that helped me with the pronunciation. But yeah, I'm trying to learn Arabic and in today's video, I'm going to give you some tips on how to learn a foreign language. So, let's get into it. The first thing you're going to need to know when you decide to learn a new language beyond the obvious of what language you're going to learn is what kind of learner you are. This is very important to note because it will help you decide in what ways you can best learn um, out of the few that I'm going to sort of give you as options. So what kind of learner are you? Are you someone that needs a very precise schedule to stick to with deadlines and someone holding you accountable? Are you someone that can hold yourself accountable to the point where you don't need a schedule? you just kind of have vague goals and you know this is what I'm gonna do. Do you learn better if someone is telling you something or if you're reading something? What about practice? Are you able to confidently practice with other people or would you rather practice by yourself in a room until you feel like you have everything? Once you've figured that out, we can get on to the different ways you can learn a language and you can decide which one is best for you. The first and most obvious would be go to a class. Now, this might be actually easier than you might think due to the uh, virus that's still circulating. You may know what I'm talking about. Due to this, a lot of universities have been offering some of their online courses for free. And I would imagine that languages are some of them. This can be easily accomplished by simply Googling the language you wanna learn and free online course. I know Harvard offers a lot of courses. I imagine the other Ivy Leagues do as well. So it's always something to think about, especially if you are someone who needs someone else holding you accountable and are more of a traditional language learner. However, if that's not your thing, you can look for a community college course or a course uh, that's given maybe at your local community center. Is that a thing? I think it's a thing. It's not a thing where I live, but I've read about it. So we're gonna say it's a thing. Those would probably cost some money, but presumably not too much. So it's definitely something to look into with all the benefits of what I've already said, essentially, someone holding you accountable, deadlines, textbooks, and the like. The next possible way to learn a language is sort of similar to the class, just with a little less supervision, and that is just buying a textbook or a workbook and working through it yourself. This way you have all the materials that a class would use, you just don't have a teacher. And this can definitely be done if you're more of an independent language learner. You still have the educational materials that have been provided, so you know that they'll probably work, or at least have worked for some people and you can make your own deadlines based on that. You presumably won't have a teacher holding you accountable, but you can always ask a friend or family member if you wanna do that. It's sort of a middle ground between completely independent language learning and completely dependent, I suppose, that is in a classroom. The next step is using some sort of language learning apps and other resources to learn your language. This can be something like Duolingo, Lingodeer, Memrise, YouTube, or a combination of all of the above. To give you a brief rundown on these apps, Duolingo is probably the best known language learning app. It is free. I think it's on, it's definitely on Apple. I think it's on other operating systems as well. And it has a variety of languages to choose from, including some conlangs if you're into that. Lingodeer is similar to Duolingo. They have sort of the same idea, except Lingodeer is mainly for East Asian languages with Chinese, Japanese, and Korean, something that Duolingo did not have when it first came out. Both apps are very vocabulary focused and translation focused. That is to say there are no lessons. They will simply give you, let's say a word, and then you have to click on the written form or the English translation, or here's a sentence in English, write it in your target language or vice versa. Duolingo also has speaking practice where you repeat, you know, what's being spoken, but I'm not sure how accurate it is. This sort of app is great to start with and it's very, um, appealing, it's very easy to use. However, I don't think you could say that you would learn an entire language based on this app alone, mainly because it doesn't explain grammatical structures or anything really. You get a lot of vocabulary and you understand the structure of the language just by looking at it, but you won't really understand the intrinsic rules or levels of formality, things like that, because they simply aren't explained to you. For example, in the Arabic Duolingo, which I'm using right now, you would be able to pick up when you get farther along that words have feminine endings, I suppose, when you're referring to someone feminine. This is what I assume anyway, because Duolingo doesn't tell me, but you can tell that the word for, let's say, teacher is different when talking about a man or a woman. Memrise is a flashcard app, and it is also free, and there are tons of flashcards that you can already access, or you can make your own. So let's say Japanese 101, learning hiragana, you could find 
the flashcards for that. So this is a great app for remembering and learning the alphabet of a new language, especially if it's not a language that shares your alphabet. However, like the other language learning apps, there isn't a ton of explanation depending on how well the creator of the flashcards decided to explain things. Interestingly, they do have some more fun memory techniques. I remember when I was trying to learn hiragana and katakana uh, for Japanese, a lot of the symbols had pictures with them and that was a way to sort of remember them. So associate this picture with this sound, which was kind of fun. YouTube has a lot of courses as well that you can find, learn Spanish 101 or Japanese 101, let's say. These are a little bit more useful than the aforementioned apps because they may have some sort of explanation. However, YouTube is just usually a preview of what the course has to offer. That is, you may be able to find a five minute video, but they'll want you to pay for the whole course, which makes sense. Learning a language is no easy task after all. Finally, if you're really fe feeling daring, you can just go at the language on your own. Ask your friends for help who speak it already, or if you have a lot of money, time, and the ability to uproot your life, go to a country that speaks that language. Pretty cool, right? This is more or less how I learned German. Although it's very overwhelming at first, it is a great way to learn a language. You really pick up the vocabulary and the slang that the average person uses because you're using the language every day. Now, if you're only immersed without any sort of formal classes, similar to the language learning apps I already mentioned, you may be missing some key grammatical points. However, these can be cleared up with your friends or other people that you may encounter, assuming they know anything about the grammar of the language they speak. That may sound a little bit silly, but I for one know that a lot of English speakers are barely taught grammar. So when asked about the perfect tense, they have no idea what that means. I actually learned a lot of my grammar knowledge through learning other languages. That is to say when I was learning Spanish and we had to conjugate, you know, the imperfect versus past perfect, I learned what those tenses meant in Spanish and then were explained in English as well because this was not something an English class had ever covered for me. So these are a few options of how you can learn a foreign language. Now, don't take this to mean that you should only use one method. I would say the best language learning idea is to sort of combine all of them and do whatever feels comfortable for you. My only other tips are don't get discouraged and don't be scared. I know it can be very vulnerable to try and express yourself in a new language, especially in front of native speakers, but the best way to learn is to practice. If you're worried about being corrected, you can always ask the friend you're speaking with not to correct you or only to correct you if there's some sort of really big meaning issue. I personally have learned the languages I speak in a variety of ways. I learned English naturally, you know, from the immersion in the environment because I grew up an American. Spanish and French I learned mainly in classes with some native speaker help chatting with friends and things like that. German I learned mainly via immersion in Austria, although I also did have a sort of once a week class that was taught entirely in German to other foreigners just to get a little bit more basis on grammar and then in college as well. I learned Portuguese from a class as well as talking with my best friend, although my Portuguese is far from perfect. And I'm currently trying to work on Arabic with the help of Duolingo, any other apps I can find, and friends that I hang out with who may just speak at me in Arabic until I can understand them. Anyway, these are a couple ways to figure out how you want to learn a language. I hope this is helpful. A lot of people tend to ask me how I learned so many languages and this is my best advice. I would love to know what language you guys are planning on learning and why, so please feel free to tell me in the comments below. And I hope you're having a great week and I will see you next Sunday. Bye.